Good morning, everyone. This is Reverend Elizabeth Mora coming to you from Unity Northwest Church on Christmas Day. Yay, it's Christmas Day. So whether this is a great celebration for you or the best relief of your year, <laughs> we all made it to Christmas. Here we are. And we're going to have a sweet little half an hour or so of prayer time together today. And uh, when we're done, I'll let you know um, but it, we'll go ahead and unmute if anybody wants to chat. Hi, Karen. Hi, Mary. Great to have you with. We have Christmas Eve. Ah, I think I know who that is. And again, when we're done here, we'll go ahead and uh, unmute and I'll take us off record and um, we can chit chat a little bit if you'd like, or if you need to get on to turkey dinner or ham dinner, or whatever you're doing, that's okay too. As I was setting everything up, this is one of those God moments, you know, <laughs> they're all God moments, but this one is just so cute. Um, dinner, or ham dinner, or whatever you're doing, that's okay too. As oh, I was setting everything up, this is one of those God moments, you know, <laughs> they're all God moments, but this one is just so cute. Um, dinner, or ham dinner, or whatever you're doing, that's okay too. As oh, I was setting everything up, this is one of those God moments, you know, <laughs> they're all God moments, but this one is just so cute. Um, in her, in her. There we go. I think that someone else was not on mute and came back over. So there we go. I think we've got it now. You're only hearing one of me, right? You're hearing one of me. Thanks, Carolyn, Cindy. I love the thumbs up. That helps me a lot. You just never know what's going to happen on technology. So uh, another fun thing that happened as I was doing all of this was that uh, I went on a phone. I did whatever happened. My computer just decided to play a song. Isn't that amazing when it does that? And there's been a couple of times this has happened to me in my life. And it's been, you know, like the perfect song, like who's listening? What, you know, what's happening here? So as I was setting up this prayer service, uh, let's take a listen to the song that just decided to play on its own. I don't know why. As long as you can pray, you are never helpless. As long as you can pray, you are never alone. It only takes a moment to turn a life around and point it home. Reach in and find compassion. Reaching out to lend a hand. Reach in and pray for Reaching out to take the stand It only takes a moment To turn a life around And point it home There's always someone here There's always someone here who can share your victories. Angels for each other, friends along the way to lead it deep. Reaching in to touch the silence, reaching out to light the way, reaching in to find a guide. Reaching out to lead a change for each other, friends along the way. There are people everywhere reaching out for prayer. We'll be angels, angels for each other. Thank you. 
Plugging back in. Ah, now you're hearing me. to do the trick your deep is your default microphone has changed that's what we want the default microphone has changed and is staying here all right so keep giving me the thumbs let me know the, if you can't again so we hope we've got it going welcome to the christmas day prayer service I'd like to start by reading the daily word of course our daily word for today I experience the wonder of Christmas. Today, I celebrate Christmas. The gifts of Advent are now fully realized. I am filled with the faith, peace, love, and joy that have renewed my awareness of the Christ presence within me. I'm going to read that one again. I am filled with the faith, peace, love, and joy that have renewed my awareness of the Christ presence within me. That's what this time is about, as we spend those four weeks building up to the Christmas realization that we build it on this base of faith and peace and love and joy. Before my day becomes busy with visiting friends ha, 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 and family or welcoming guests into my home, I take time to feel the promise and the love that this day brings. Thank you for doing that today, even if you weren't going to be going anywhere. There's still probably something you're going to be doing today. And you are taking time first thing in the morning for prayer. I receive the true gift of Christmas and realize that people around the world are recognized as members of the human family and appreciated. All this because one man more than 2000 years ago taught us that the kingdom of God of love was among us. Today, we are reminded to look for the light in each person. It is the Christ light we honor and celebrate this day and carry with us every day. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2.11, passage that we read last night. Oh, and let that daily word kind of wash over you. And I thought I would read again part of the passage. So that was from the Luke version. Let me read a little bit from the Matthew telling of Jesus's birth. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus, whoops, yes, after Jesus was born. See, I got caught up there in a moment. Wait, it, after Jesus was born? Oh yeah, that's right. In this telling, listen carefully. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. Just that portion of the story, let's take a look at it metaphysically. And if you think about what it means for you internally in your consciousness, and if every character plays a part of you, an aspect of you, think about when something, you hear about something wonderful, new, marvelous, 
there's a part of you that very often is scared, is King Herod. That is threatening to me. So if ego, if Herod is representing our ego, um, our physical human self that says, ooh, I am scared of a change. And what do you mean that there's something spiritual beyond me that could be more powerful than I am? And so every little part of us that is thinking this limited view is the truth gets scared to think that there's something else out there because what I've been holding on to for all these many years, well, that's worked for me on some level and we get scared. And then we want that to go away on some level. We're excited and yet we also are not so sure, you know, the devil that we know. So that makes this part of the story your story as well. There's a part of you, these wise men that come, the wisdom that rises up from you says, there's another way. There's something else here. There's something more about you that you don't fully know yet. And it's coming to be born. That's the message. That's the good news. So then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word so that I may also go and bring him homage. Ah, so we're even a little tricky in there. Oh, for a moment we think, yeah, we'll go along with this. And when they heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising. So the wisdom part of us keeps going, even when there's something else lurking in the background. Until it had stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. We learned to take another path. It's like that great story um, that psychologists use to help us change. You're walking down a street and you fall in a hole and you get out again. And then you walk down the same street and you see the hole, but you fall in it again. And then you walk down the street again and you see the hole and you decide to step around it this time. And then the last part is you walk down in a different alley. So that's what our wise men did. Sometimes this way isn't going to keep working. And so we take a whole new way we have been changed by experiencing the Christ in us and everything is set new again. And we take a different path. That's the gift of Christmas. And I invite you now as we go into a time of meditation, take in those words and I'm going to read a silent night, holy night meditation from the Christmas book from I think it was last year. I keep all of these little booklets. They're wonderfully inspiring. And um, so let's go ahead and we'll use this from Reverend Linda Martella Witsit, who runs the Silent Unity program. Thank you, Reverend Linda. And uh, I uh, invite you to gently close those eyes if it's comfortable for you. as we join together all of us in prayer and meditation on Christmas morning, 2020. And first notice that breath. Notice the body. The body that supports us. Notice how we're sitting. Notice where my hands are in my lap, my feet on the ground, the spine is tall, the face relaxed. Enjoy that for a moment. Okay. 
silent night, holy night. In the quiet, sacred darkness, Christ is born. Silent night, holy night, the womb of spirit. In silence and sacredness, a whisper of awe in the dark night. It is time. The light has come. Christ is born. My mind is like a classroom filled with chattering kindergartners, boisterous and ungrounded. Even then, Christ is born. Even when I fail to notice the purposeful order of my life, or discount the generous blessings of every day, even then, Christ is born. Even when I give up on myself, harboring unkind self-judgment, believing in self-imposed limitations, even then, Christ is born. Even when I doubt and when I worry in unworthiness or boast and pretend I am separate and self-sustaining, even then, Christ is born. Even when I behold divine splendor in the faces of my loved ones, and when I give generously without first taking inventory of my good, even then, Christ is born. Christ is born into my silent holy night. Christ is born into my silent, holy night. Christ is born. Those words wash over me. I feel them in my body. I know them at a cellular level. Christ is born. I am Christ. I am here to do all that Jesus did. I grow. I transform, I give, love, rejoice, forgive. I grab hold of those truths. They are my rock. When I am swayed by outer happenings or difficult thoughts, I hold on to these rocks. Love and peace, peace. Joy, joy and faith. And let us take time now to sit in this silence, 
knowing that the Christ is born. The Christ is your truth. I now turn myself over to this true nature of mine. in silence. What a gift this is to know that this is my truth. I have this teaching from unity, from all the great teachings of the centuries, reminding us over and over again to look within, to find our strength and our love and the truth. In one moment, we can reset and be reborn back into the truth of what we feel when we look at that scene in the manger, that baby coming forth, reminding us of new life, reminding us of the presence of God here in this world and that that presence is me and everyone around me. Grateful for this time together to gather with others in silence. We have created a powerful space of energy right here, a shift in consciousness in ways that we don't even know that will play out in days and years to come every time come together like this. We contribute to the shift for there to be more of the Christ in the world. And so it is. Amen. Again, thank you for being here with us for this Christmas Day prayer. I don't know what you have planned for yourself and for those of you who are watching on Facebook and those who will watch this later on, whatever it is that you're doing, remember that the Christ is with you in all of it. So maybe this is, again, a little bit different this year, you know, as you sit down to that meal with a few less people, maybe you're a little more mindful as you take it in, maybe as you're cooking it and there isn't a pressure to get it on table for your guests who are coming, there's a little less pressure and you can enjoy the preparation more. Or you take some time to really look at that tree that you put up and spent that time on and appreciate it. Lots of opportunities today to do that. 
Thank you for being here. I'm going to now close this part of the Zoom call to Facebook and come offline. And if you would like to stay on with me personally, uh, we won't be recording it. And I'm going to go ahead and do a tour around my house. If you want to see the Christmas trees, you don't have to, but if you would like to, you can stay on. And now I will also, before I close this out though, offer up um, to come off of mute and we can all share with each other and say hi, and I'm gonna stop the live stream right now.